Never trust someone who can't look you in the eye. This statement isn't quite true. There's lots of reasons why someone might not make very good eye contact with you. They might be nervous. They might be a little socially awkward. They might be on the autistic spectrum. But even though there's perfectly logical reasons why someone won't look you in the eye, we still have this bit of an instinct that we don't fully connect with someone who doesn't have good eye contact. Good eye contact projects that confidence. It makes us feel that we can trust that person, even when we actually can't. Therefore, it's really important for us as speakers, when we're speaking physically, to have eye contact with the audience. But when we're speaking virtually, and we can't see an audience, there are no eyes to make contact with, where should we be looking instead? The equivalent is the camera. The camera is where the audience feel that you're making eye contact with them, even when you can't actually see those eyes. And what we're going to cover in this video are three changes that you can make to ensure that that eye contact is more consistent and stronger so that you project that confidence and build your trust with the audience. When I first started filming videos as a speaker, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was basically just filming either directly off my webcam on the laptop or selfie style on the phone. What I discovered was that after a few videos, I noticed this odd effect coming in. When I had my laptop, I was speaking into my face on the screen. And exactly the same when I was holding my phone selfie style, I was looking at my face on the screen. And do you notice that when someone's looking at their face on the screen, it doesn't quite feel right for you at the other end. That's because my face is not your face. And I soon realized that when these videos were going up and being posted, I thought, ah, there's this weird disconnect when I'm filming myself speaking, but I'm looking at myself on the screen. I actually need to be looking into the camera because that's where the audience feel that they're being addressed and they feel that the speech is being directed towards them rather than me just monologuing along to myself. <laughs> we don't want this to be happening, not just on your videos, but when it comes to meetings, when it comes to webinars, when it comes to online speeches and workshops, we want to make sure that your audience feel like the message is being directed to them and not to some other random individual in the distance. So let's cover three changes that are going to help you to improve your eye contact and make your audience feel more involved in your speaking. The first change is a mindset change. One of the things that I notice when people are speaking to camera is they have a fear of the camera. That little cold metallic lens makes them feel a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit awkward. Speaking to an inanimate object that's giving you nothing back, it does feel a little bit strange. But the really key change that we need to make as virtual speakers is recognizing that the camera isn't the enemy, it's actually our friend. Without the camera, no one can hear your message. No one can see you speak. This camera allows you to reach your audience on YouTube, it allows you to connect with people through Zoom, it allows you to speak to your audience through Facebook Live. If that camera isn't there, you're not a virtual speaker. You and the camera need to create a partnership together and you need to see the camera as such a valuable partner in a relationship that allows you to be a virtual speaker. The first change that will automatically help you make more eye contact with the camera is not to see it as an adversary, but see it as an ally. The second change you need to make is a structural change. You need to ensure that the structure of your virtual speaking apparatus is set up in a way that automatically facilitates more eye contact. 
Let me explain what I mean. Most people do not have their camera at eye level. Think about it. When you have your laptop on your desk, it's quite often somewhere around about here, isn't it? And you're looking down into the webcam and into the screen. And not only does this create a bit of a weird power dynamic where you're looking down at your audience, but it also means that you're less likely to naturally find your gaze falling onto the camera. With your natural gaze falling straight ahead, you've got to make an active effort to be looking down into that camera. A similar thing can happen when you're on selfie mode or you're on your phone as well. Quite often people are holding their phone somewhere around about here and they're speaking down into their phone. And again, it's got that weird parent telling off the child dynamic. What you can do is change the structure of your camera setup that automatically means that the camera is falling more naturally level off your eyes. For example, with my phone just now, I've got my halo light set up and you might not necessarily realize on the video because you can't see my legs, but I'm quite a tall dude. I'm six foot four, 188 centimeters in new money. And I have my tripod <laughs> bent as far as it will go without it falling down so that I can get that camera as high as possible. And as you'll see, the camera isn't quite as level as I would like it to be. But if I stand back far enough, there's a small enough gap between me naturally looking straight ahead and then just looking a little bit further down into the camera that isn't too much of an issue. I do a similar thing with my laptop as well. So again, when I'm sitting at my desk, even if I wasn't as tall as I was, I'd be looking down, but especially with my height, I need to make a real effort to get that laptop a little bit higher. One of the things that I invested in was a laptop stand. What I found is that the laptop stand still wasn't high enough to get the webcam up to my eye line. Here's how I solved that problem. This is the box that the laptop stand came in. And what I've done is I've taken the box and I actually put the laptop stand on top of the box and then the box goes on top of my desk. And what I've found is that just about gets the webcam high enough. Again, it's still not perfectly level. I'm too much of a, a lanky saurus for it to get right up, but it's pretty close with that. That's the structural setup that I've put in to ensure that that camera is sitting more naturally level with my eye line. When the camera on your phone or your desktop is more naturally level, you're more likely to actually be looking into it. So that's the second change, a structural change that you can make to ensure you're naturally making a little more eye contact with the camera. Our Facebook group, Rise and Inspire Speakers, provides you with a safe, supportive community to develop the skills to get your message out into the world. We host a virtual summit, Inspire Week, within the group every month where you can sign up for a 30 minute slot to speak live in the group. This is a free opportunity you can sign up for month after month to practice your skills, try new things, and refine aspects of your story and message. There is a ton of educational content that gets pumped into this group. You can access ongoing educational resources that help you gain more confidence on camera, create more compelling speech content, and develop a deeper connection with your ideal audiences. Speaking of connection, the members of our community are fantastic. They are like-minded people who just like you want to make a difference in the world and will cheer you on and encourage you every step of the way. If you want to master your virtual speaking skills, then this is the place to be. The third change that you need to make is a behavioral change. Ultimately, we don't have a natural habit of looking into the camera. The human brain is designed to be attracted to faces. Therefore, when we see a face on the screen, whether it's our face or the face of our audiences, our brain 
automatically wants to look at faces. It's got a bias towards faces. We've got to re-engineer that habit loop so that our natural first instinct is to look at the camera. There's a couple of really simple interventions that you can do to start to create this habit for yourself. Put something near your camera that encourages you to look at it. This can be as simple as a little post-it note that has an arrow saying, look here. Most webcams have a light that comes on that tells you, number one, when the webcam is on, but also use that light as a little indicator of, oh yeah, I need to remember to look there. You can go to all sorts of lengths to make sure this happens to you. I've seen some great attachments, things like a smiley face, and the smiley face fits over the, the top of a phone or the top of a, a laptop, and the smile in the smiley face is cut out. So you can look at the webcam through the smile. And because we have this natural bias to look at faces, looking at a smiley face that just happens to have a webcam is a bit more natural for us than looking into that cold metallic lens. Ultimately, if you're going to have to start having more eye contact with the camera, it needs to become a habit. It needs to become something you don't even think about. You just do it. Because there's much more important things to be thinking about whilst you're speaking than where your eyes are. This is something that needs to be a natural inclination for you because that means you can put more of your energy into the content of what you're saying, the emotion and tone that you're putting through what you're saying, how you're making an effort to connect with and engage with your audience. That's where your attention should be focused, not on desperately trying to stop your eyes darting all over the screen on your phone or on your desktop. If you put these three changes in, that mindset shift towards seeing the camera as a friend, making some structural changes to get that camera on more of a level playing field and setting up that trigger that makes you look into the camera more often, then you'll start appearing more confident when you're speaking on camera, more trustworthy, and the audience will feel that they're being engaged as an individual. Did you feel that I'm addressing you in this video? I so hope that's the thumbnail for the video.